Well, a good Sunday to you. Thanks for finding us here at Fox 26. I'm meteorologist John Dawson. Time for the tropical update. Whether you're on Fox local, you're on Fox 26 Houston.com, or perhaps you're on my favorite YouTube checking in. We're glad you're here. Remember, we're here every day of hurricane season, keeping you updated on the tropics. Although I'm going to start off with a little bit of a twist. So for our international viewers, hold where you hold what you got. Don't go anywhere, but I need to talk about what's happening on the east coast of the US real quick. This is not a tropical system. It's a fall nor'easter or uh, October nor'easter is what I've been wanting to call it and I'm going to call it that an October nor'easter and it has some gusty winds. It has a lot of rain. It has a lot of coastal impacts. It has a lot of things similar to a tropical system, but it's not. We're just going to keep with this October nor'easter description of what the system's like, and it's going to continue to kind of move up the coast. And it's been kind of bashing the Carolinas for the last 24 hours or so with those gusty winds, 50 to 60 mile an hour wind gusts, as well as quite a bit of rainfall. But now we look up a little bit further to the north on the east coast, where we've got a little bit more populated regions and also some lower lying areas that are really going to start getting impacted. You got several different shades of green here representing uh, coastal flood watches, coastal flood warnings and advisories and some other just generally coastal and flooding type of advisories from the National Weather Service and a lot of rain as possible as well. And I've been reading a, a quite a bit and even like the New Jersey transit system is probably going to be impacted by this tomorrow uh, because of all of these impacts of this nor'easter. So we'll keep you track, keep you updated, keep tracking on that. Uh, and as I said, not technically a tropical system, but I know it impacts a lot of folks in the US and kind of similar to one in some ways or another. So wanted to just start with that. So now I know there's a bunch of you out there who are on YouTube, who are in the Caribbean, always checking in with us. We're glad you're here. Thanks for doing that. Leave me a comment if you would there in the in the uh, uh, the comment section for the YouTubers and it's quiet and that's nice, right? We're going to keep it that way. We like it that way in the Caribbean as well as the Gulf. Now the Atlantic is where we've seen the most action recently and we're still seeing that. I will point out that this sort of mess right here is what's left over from Jerry. It's just remnants. It's not tropical anymore. If you'll remember yesterday at 4 p.m. the National Hurricane Center said we're done with Jerry. It's not tropical anymore, but we do have another wave that's out here uh, way out in the Atlantic and pretty far to the south as far as the latitude goes and this does have the possibility this tropical wave of developing some tropical characteristics more likely in a, in a, a couple of days. Uh, it needs a couple days and you see that the Hurricane Center is not overwhelmingly sure that this is going to turn into something because even over the seven day period they only give it a 50% chance but over a two day period it could also develop. So that X represents kind of that area of broad low pressure where the wave is and then it's going to continue to move to the northwest and somewhere in our orange shading here is where we'd expect it to develop into something tropical if it were to develop into something tropical. And as mentioned, 50% chance is what the Hurricane Center is rating it at right now over the next seven days. So in the, the time frame of everything here, we're well into October now. And you'll notice there's this little peak. We're like going down, down, down as far as our historical activity. And there's just a little bit of a peak and then it drops down again quite significantly. This little bit of a peak here is sometimes this time of the year we have these weak fronts, whether it comes through and into the Gulf and stalls out, or we have these fronts that kind of even stall out over off of the East Coast. I think it's a, probably a little more common in the Gulf. And then we've got that gyre that we talk about, that Central American gyre that sort of spins some things off sometimes and into the Gulf. And right along those fronts like that, sometimes uh, a little low pressure system will try to get itself organized and become tropical. That's kind of why we have this little uh, hitch there where we kind of come back up on the numbers just because those fronts provide an extra little boundary. It's a brief little window here where we could have a little bit more activity. I don't see any of that happening in the near future, so that's great news, but I just kind of wanted to show I've had people ask me before, why do we have that little uh, sort of uh, raise back, rise back up again, and then it falls sort of back down. That's my explanation for that, at least at this point. All right, that's going to wrap us up for today. Uh, we've got that 
tropical wave we're keeping an eye on in the Atlantic. We'll see if it gets more organized. And of course, we'll be back here again tomorrow, a little bit after 4 p.m. Central Time to bring you the latest on what's happening in the tropics.